In my humble opinion, resonators are one of the coolest, most versatile sound design techniques available to an electronic music producer. For years, producers, if you wanted to use a resonator in your music, in your sound design workflow, you only had two options. You either had Ableton Resonator, which is the goaded Ableton stock resonator effect that allows you to have multiple resonators in order to create chords, and you could change subtle things about the timbre and the pitch of the resonation. But it unfortunately didn't have MIDI input unless you use certain Macs for live devices that made you have to add another lane and then throw in the MIDI and then route the MIDI and it becomes a little bit of a convoluted process that kind of messes up your workflow a bit. Your other option if you weren't super high IQ like me and use Ableton over all the other DAWs, I'm just kidding, but if you didn't use Ableton then you couldn't use Ableton's resonator. So you were stuck with the only other mainstream quality resonator out there, Kilohertz resonator. Amazing resonator but limited to only one like resonator resonation, I guess, frequency per unit. And so anytime you brought in that effect, you could actually put MIDI into it. You could even modulate it with other modulators in the kilohertz ecosphere. You could even change it from saw wave to square wave. And you could, of course, alter the pitch and other things. But if you wanted it to work kind of similar to Ableton's resonator and create like resonated chords with it, well, then again, there's a long convoluted little workaround that's gonna make your workflow a little more complicated and just make it a little bit less fun to use a resonator in some of the more complex and advanced fun ways that you can use it. So I'm happy to say humans, we are finally moving forward. The company Zynth Audio has presented us with a new solution that honestly just gives us the best of both worlds, the best of kilohertz and the best of Ableton resonator fused together into one plugin. And so that's where we're gonna be checking out today. Hello humans, Cubic here, back after months at this point with a new production tutorial. I'm super glad to be back making videos, but today we are gonna go over Resonator by Zynth Audio. They've been very gracious to go ahead and send me a free copy to sort of review it and break it down for you. I do really think regardless of them sending me it for free, I genuinely think this is the best Resonator you can get on the market and also Resonation I think is one of the best, most versatile sound design techniques that you can utilize. And I think this pretty inexpensive plugin is the perfect solution to all of your resonation desires. So yeah, I'm gonna show you uh, why I think you should definitely hop on this shit if you haven't already. Now throughout the entire video, if you do find yourself deciding, okay, fuck it, yeah, I need to get my hands on this. Go ahead and go down to the description below. I have a little affiliate link that Zynth Audio gave me. So I get like a small percentage of the purchases. <laughs> I don't really make a lot of money from these videos. So if you wanna support me and also get yourself a sick new tool, definitely check out the link below. Now, before we get into it, for those of you who don't really understand what resonation is, well, resonation, can mean different things in different contexts, but a resonator is a sort of like tune delay that emphasizes certain frequencies and certain pitches. So you can kind of set different pitches and it basically creates this kind of tonal metallic effect that can create things like harmonies and add like uh, tonality to sounds that didn't even have tonality before. For instance, I have this noise loop. That has zero tonality, right? Now with just some subtle resonation. So there you go. That I think is a perfect explanation of like the kind of sound and tonality of a resonator, at least when you're using it in chord mode. Now I do have this project file here where I made a bunch of different resonator experiments, which I will be going over in another video, turning like for instance, this laser into and uh, got like this 
Jay Kutch sort of future bass. Also some really experimental filtering. So yeah, those you can all look forward to me breaking down in my next video. It'll be utilizing Resonator, but you can also do all of this probably with Ableton Resonator. It'll just be a little bit harder. And I will be putting out this project file on my Patreon as well so people can dive into that. So hey, if you buy Resonator, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next video where I'll be showing you really cool ways to use it as well as giving you access to a project file that pretty much gives you a bunch of cheats, <laughs> a bunch of easy shortcuts to make some cool shit right out of the gate. So yeah, keep an eye on that. But today I'm just gonna basically be breaking down all of the features of the plugin, how you can use it and apply it to your workflow and hopefully exposing you to uh, a cool sound design effect and really cool plugin that you can maybe throw in your own toolbox. So let's go ahead and open this baby up. All right, so Resonator. I think the coolest thing about this plugin is that it was made in part by a color bass producer. And if you're not familiar with color bass, it's a genre of, I guess, melodic bass music that heavily relies on tonal resonation, either through Resonator or through other things like convolution reverb, which I will be going over in my next video. But it, it does rely on the Resonator a lot to create these kind of melodic but heavy dubstep sounds. So with that in mind, we have someone who heavily relies on the resonator, helping develop a new ideal resonator plugin. And that really shines through with things even as simple as instead of a dry wet knob, there's a dry signal and a wet signal. They operate in parallel. So the dry signal is your unaffected audio. It's not running through resonator. It's just like spitting out the audio that was your input. And then the wet knob is obviously your affected signal, your affected audio everything you do in the plugin will alter that and as a lot of you guys may know when you're using a resonator at least in terms of things like color base you usually don't want to lose the original signal because that when you resonate stuff it kind of causes a lot of the foundational content of the sound like the fundamental low end and like the dry grittiness it causes that to dissipate and it becomes this sort of like wet reverby delay like tonality and so a lot of times when you use a resonator in somewhere like ableton you want to create your own parallel signal and then dial it in that way so if you did want it to work the same way as just a regular or dry wet knob you would turn the wet all the way up and you turn the dry all the way down and vice versa but this is something you play around based on the context of whatever you're creating so we'll start from left to right here so as you can see we have the same sort of feature as the kilohertz resonator where you can make your sort of harmonic input be either a saw wave or a square wave and then with resonators one of the interesting things about them is that they react so differently based on whatever's being sent into them based on like the frequency content and the pitch content and like even the note that you're playing it's all i don't know just it's kind of just one of those plugins you have to play around and see what works but it gives you options square wave or saw wave the decay is like the tail so when i when i put it all the way up that's like how long it resonates for if i turn it all the way down you can see and then the color, you can kind of, so you think of the decay as like the tail or like the time if it was like delay. And then you can think of the color as like the brightness. It's almost like a built-in filter. But speaking of built-in filters, we also have a built-in filter. Because something you'll find a lot with a resonator is that there's a lot of uh, gross resonant uh, frequencies that come out of it and so I find this really helpful in ducking down some harsh frequencies as well as there's a low pass and a high pass filter so you can bring your dry back in bring your wet out
and there you go. It's it's a much more clean signal because you don't have the low end coming from the resonator adding mud and, and, and creating some weird phasing and stuff. So really helpful to have this filter here with a power button, you can turn it on and off. Just built into the plugin, you can do your EQ right here on the wet signal very handy next we've got the main section for really customizing how this resonator works so it works extremely similar to the ableton resonator start with one here basically you, you click the power button to turn on each individual resonator and each resonator lane has the ability to change the note as you can see the note will be labeled at the bottom on these ones the note will be labeled at the top but you set the note that you want the resonation to be set at. And that's another thing, you kind of just go by the tune of the sound that you're putting into it. You can also go by the tune of the overall song, what key you're in basically. And then you can also just, I don't know, go by feeling because different notes react differently. And you also have the ability for MIDI input, which I'll go over in a second. But right now, this is just input audio based. So you have a gain knob, you can turn up how loud each individual resonation is. You can pan it left to right. And then you can also, there's a fine knob where you can kind of detune stuff if you want it. Now, once you start adding more resonations to make things like chords and harmonics, it shows you how many semitones above the root note you're setting it so you can create chords. Even if you, you don't know music theory very well, you can just look up like what is a minor chord and then it'll be like, Honestly, I don't know music theory very well, so I can't tell you right off the head, but I'm assuming it's like plus two semitones and then plus three or something like that. So if you, someone who probably knows music theory better than me, you know how to build chords, you can start building your own chords in here, which you can do that in Ableton Resonator. But the thing that's different is that this resonator gives you the ability to create essentially different snapshots of chords. So you could build up to eight different chords or harmonic structures. And then if you look in Ableton down here, if I click configure, I can actually automate the states. So instead of relying on MIDI, you could just build your own chord progression and then automate between each chord, which makes the whole process so much easier and simpler, especially compared to what you've had to do previously, which is automate individual resonators to change notes and you have to know where in the automation makes the right note change and it's been a whole process. So that right there is such a big quality of life improvement for resonator plugins in general. Now let's say you're like me and you don't really know music theory that well and you don't know how to build chords. Well, they give you a little like built-in cheat codes basically. You want a minor chord? Boom. You want a minor seventh and ninth chord? I think is what that means. Boom. You want a major chord? Boom. You want a major seventh and ninth? Boom. Major sixth and ninth? Boom. Now, I don't know what half of these things mean. I just know that they give me cool sounding chords and that's all you need to know. You should actually look into it and so should I. That's why I'm back in college. I'm taking a music theory class right now, actually. So hopefully in the future, I'll know a little bit more about what I'm talking about. And I'll be able to explain this shit to you, but I'm sorry, music theory is just not my area of expertise. I usually just play it by ear, but either way, helps you build your own chords here. Then you can get these states done quickly. Something I also notice you can do, you can reset set individual pitches and I don't quite understand what the set all does if I'm going to be honest so if someone else knows definitely let me know in the comments next is the MIDI input here let me show you first off if you're in Ableton we'll just skip to one of these so I've got the chord trigger down right here and basically on Ableton you make a separate MIDI track and then you'll see down here in this section you want to point it to whatever track has the resonator plugin on it. For me, it was this bass track. And then you go in here and you click on one of the resonator inputs. I don't think it really matters which one. And boom. And so like without this, this is what my bass sounds like. Sounds fucking god awful. Resonator? And that's the fucking magic because I have these chords. So basically each note can actually probably see them changing in here. Let's see. See, 
boom. And so like each note basically takes up a resonator. So you have the ability to have, I guess, a total of six notes in each chord. I'm not sure if Ableton's resonator has six, it might though. So in normal mode, you can control the release of the notes. So in this case here, I think I need to shorten all of these chords to really show you this. Okay, so basically you're setting the release of the MIDI. So if you have it on zero, it'll exactly follow what you have the MIDI notes at, the length you have them at. But if you turn it all the way up, it will add a sort of like artificial MIDI release or MIDI like tail to each note, which is helpful if you're just dragging MIDI from like a, another sound that's more staccato. And instead of going in and changing the length of all the MIDI, you can just turn up the release and it'll add more tail to all the resonation. So that's really helpful, really handy. Then next you have the ability to um, add this, I guess it's, they call it a round robin, which basically what I've seen, lets you set how many resonators you want it to be limited to. So let's say I have six notes on each chord, but it sounds like ass. And so I only want like three or four notes from each chord. If I set it to three, it only opens up three resonators. And now I don't know exactly how it's choosing which notes to use. I'm assuming it looks like it's choosing the, the, top, the higher notes first. Um, let me do a little test. Oh, actually, okay, so it's kind of just choosing random notes from each section, which if you don't know music theory, you can kind of use this feature to accidentally create cool new melodies, cool new harmonies. So that's a really cool feature as well. It's the first time I've seen a plugin with MIDI input allow you to customize the way the MIDI input works going into it. Usually there's just like a blank, this is MIDI input, it takes notes in here and it puts the notes into the plugin. This allows you to kind of warp and limit how the notes impact the effect within the plugin rather than having to do that externally. So that's another really cool cool feature and aspect of this. To wrap things up, we've got options to change portamento, range, and width. Basically, the range is for the range of portamento. The portamento, it's like glide in an oscillator. So when the notes change, it's basically, it's adding like a transitional period between the pitch. So if you're going from A to G without portamento, it just goes A, G, but with portamento, it would go, there'd be, it's like you're connecting like a pitch automation between them. So it'd go A, G, you know? And so then portamento, you're setting the length of how long of a transition is. So listen when the notes change. And then the range sets like how much of a pitch bend you want. So that's another really cool way to manipulate the MIDI within the device, kind of in a similar way that oscillators work, but this is audio and MIDI input. So very interesting. Then finally, we've got a really perfectly styled reverb or resonation. And I, and so basically, if we put just the wet, you can kind of control how much low end and high end there is. And I find this reverb to just work so nicely with the resonator. It's just tuned so perfectly to, to kind of add this kind of smoothness and accentuate the harmonics in the sound. So I kind of think of the reverb as this sort of like background gap filler in terms of the resonator for just making things feel less like dry and metallic and kind of filling in the gaps to make everything feel lush. You see? And then that's where you bring the dry back in because 
you want that like obviously it's like too wet i mean this is a nice background thing but if you want this to be the main sound So yeah, that is Resonator by Zinth. It's $25 on Gumroad. Make sure you use my link down below. Fortunately, it doesn't give you any discount, but literally 25 bucks for the best Resonator plugin out there. And probably one of the most well-designed plugins I've encountered in a while in terms of just how intuitive it is and how it perfectly meets the needs of producers. So yeah, big shout out to Zinth Audio, to Paper Skies and Speech Res. This is an awesome plugin. I'm super stoked to add it to my workflow. And uh, I hope this video was helpful for you. Even if you don't end up getting this, I hope this at least maybe helped you understand resonation a little better and helped you realize like a new sound design method you can add to your own music. For those of you who are getting Resonator or who already have Ableton Resonator, make sure you stay tuned for my next video where I'll be breaking down all of these different examples I showed you and showing some real world application for a plugin like this. So yeah, hope you had a good time humans. I will see you soon in another video. Bye.